time to wake your grind up So we can shine up Until our time's up <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't approve that I can't lose How should I kill him? Left for the right man I can't choose I am unstoppable, had to prove that it's possible If you wanna try me, step up and I'm crossing you yeah, trophy at the trophy, now they call me Kobe Veins full of purple, can't nobody hold me Hey, put that work in every day Shooting shots till my arm hurt, see the fade away Thank God every day, he's with me when I play Went from YMCA to Team USA So I am here to stay, do it for my state Do it for that Northwest, I'm feeling like I'm yay You do it for the grand, I do it to be great I do it for the dub like IT and Nate a born runner never settle for almost Put me in the gang coach, yeah that's all folks Veins are purple, my veins are purple Go and get it, don't let them hurt you Veins are purple, veins are purple Take some patience, but it's a virtue Veins are purple, veins are purple Go and get it, don't let them hurt you Veins are purple, veins are purple Take some patience, but it's a virtue just don't worry about it, just keep playing. And it just seemed like time stood still for that moment. So it really hit hard for me.
So I remember when they were going back and forth, this um, Rainier Beach would win, and Garfield would win. Mike and Lainey would call and they'd be all excited. And you know, and of course you get excited at the other end of the phone. But, um, it was like you were there. You know, ran through some of our games. Obviously, we're on the opposite side of Rainier Beach. Um, get to that state championship game versus Rainier Beach. That game was so intense.
sick and he wanted to we were scared they wouldn't be able to sit so close to the to the front and see um, there was a, a family that gave, gave the tickets to us that said that we could sit up right in the front and that was probably the best thing that ever could have happened it was crazy because I was kind of like chill before the game, but we were walking in and I saw him crying uh, before the game. I was like, there's no way I'm losing. There's just no way I had to do it. Yeah, just being there, seeing him sit there, just being sick at the games, it just really lit a fire 
in me and making sure that my mom, my brother were going to be good. It was crazy because I, I knew that this could be the last time he saw me play. I was like, man, I gotta, gotta show out, gotta, gotta win. shot was made, the buzzer went off, everybody ran out there, we like had all this energy all of a sudden. Everybody was hugging me, the camera keeps flashing. And that really took away the reality that my dad was sick. For the season of my sophomore year, uh, I told Will and B-Roy that we were going to win this year. When nobody thought we were going to. Nobody thought we were going to be anything. After we won, I pointed at them to say that I did it, I did it. Uh, I told you guys it was going to happen and it happened. And what they said into my ear was, you did it, you did it. First thing I did was look at him, because that's, that's all I wanted, just to see him smile again. Because he, he, he wasn't really smiling during that time, because he was like going through a lot. So just being able to see him smile made me the happiest man on earth. All the coaches and Brandon Roy and um, just everybody, they just came out and hugged him. cut down the net and swung it around. <laughs> and how happy he was. It was it was the first time I've seen him smile in about six months. But even the coaches, they kind of helped get Mike, you know, to where he needed to go, and they all came around and helped him out, and um, it just felt like family. At that time, I just, I figured out that you can do anything that you set your mind to if you really want it. It's like we were magnets. Even though all the people rushed, it was, it was just Jalen, Mike, and, and I, yeah, we all just, just hugged, and, and we just, squeezed each other and couldn't let go. Um, 
and it just seemed like time stood still for that moment. I got this picture up every time. So every time, every time I turn my phone on, just seeing him smile, I know it's not, it's not as much as I wanted to. It's not in person, but just being able to see that he was once a happy man and me working hard and continuing to make him proud, that's all I want to do. I wasn't really able to say goodbye to him. And it had been a while that I had last seen him. So it kind of sucked, especially that I got here the day after he passed. So it really hit hard for me, but I'm really more concerned about how the boys are, to be honest. I just haven't brought myself to be able to talk to them about that. You know, what's going on with them and you know, how they deal with living life after he's gone. Yeah, it is a touchy subject still. <laughs> yeah, that really hit hard. Yeah. But it's like. Oh. <laughs> I would say since the day he died, May 11, 2015, Monday night, when uh, when he passed, when I was in the room, I just got this this mindset that I know he wanted me to be great. Well, as the years go on, I definitely feel better, but I use him as motivation every day on the court. And definitely taking that into high school is just take over the game the way he did and just do it for him too. Because I know that he wanted me to take school more seriously than basketball all the time. When I go to Garfield or Rotary, uh, just the memories that's come up since preschool when he's been there, coach on the sideline or in the stands. And every time I would just look over and then I would just see his face and he'll always be smiling. I actually remember this one time at the Vista when I got mad because another player found me and I threw a temper tantrum and then my dad came over and he took me to the side where nobody could see me and he just gave me that talk. He just said, just don't worry about it, just keep playing. Uh, which motivated me because every time I missed a shot or something bad happened during the game, I would just look over and then he would just be like, just keep going. He will always just have that positive look and just keep going. Mike was a great dad. I mean, he was always there. I mean, you could count on Mike and his boys. He was a perfect role model. I couldn't have asked for more. I loved Mike like he was my own son. Uh, Jalen is like his dad. And um, it just hurts me to my heart that my grandsons don't have their dad. But he was there for them, and he's instilled a lot because what they have you can't really teach they are good people and they mean well and that comes from mom and dad and the grandmas too that's what i'm most proud about is that um freddie had a great son and i love freddie to death and because of her we had mike And it, it's nothing I can say, they're great kids. Um, him winning state uh, right before uh, Mike passed away was, I mean, I think the best thing that, that could have happened for both of them. It is something that we all will remember, the pictures that they took, we will all cherish for years to come. Uh, where I won that championship, it was one of the best friends ever.
game for a lot of reasons was so emotional for the whole Garfield family, but really for for Jaylee, for obviously for their family, for the Noel family at large. And, um, none of us knew. Uh, none of us knew. And none of us wanted to believe that that was going to be the last time Mike was going to be able to watch uh, his son play high school basketball. Yeah. Jalen had a lot to prove that night. He had a lot to prove on a positive note, not on a negative, like not to, you know, prove that he could do this or do that, but to, to really prove to himself that he could be the man that his dad had raised him to be, you know, and, um, and that's what was powerful and that his dad got him to, got to see him become you know, who he had raised him to be, and that was a winner. That was a dude that could fight through anything, that it didn't matter what giant was put in front of him. Ooh, it was crazy. That was just, yeah, it was very exciting. It was very exciting, because um, we just didn't, I don't know, just the best team. You know, you play your best and you just do what you can do. And we pulled it out. That's all I can say is we pulled it out. It was blood, sweat, and tears, but we pulled it out. Yeah, he called me up and told him that. We won the state championship. We won the state championship. This family eats, breathes, <laughs> and loves basketball. My sister and Mike have done a, a great job carting him back and forth to games. I mean, there are times where we say, oh, you know, Laney, can you do this? Oh, no, Jalen and Shane have games, and they're going to be out of town this weekend, and we're going to be going to Portland. Uh, they have something with Rotary, they have something with Garfield. But it was like, he was so modest about it. It wasn't like he was bragging. Right. He right. was just real modest about whenever they want something big, he was so modest. Mm -hmm. And I think Jalen has taken after him because Jalen just seemed to be so modest when he does something big. It just made me want to be better because whatever I do is going to reflect on him. So. Every time I'm about to do something, I always think about what he would say, what other people would say about me because of what his legacy was. And I don't, and I'm never gonna terminate what he's, what he's built for me and my family. You know, our back-to-back -back state championship game led by the state MVP, Jalen Noel, um, you know, and in, in, in convincing fashion. And so I was very, very proud of him. You know, he went from being a role player one year to the state MVP his sophomore year, which was incredible. Um, you know, and so, and that's just, that just shows the testament of not only, you know, his, his determination, his effort, his hard work, you know, his talent, you know, his pedigree, but his heart. Garfield, on that time for a baby. Hey, we're ready for you. Bleed purple and white. 